represented here is a poured concrete foundation. That lateral pressure will actually crack that poured concrete wall and create a crack or an opening on the other side. Many different avenues of water gain entry. Also, what's called the cove area. Many of our customers complain about water coming up right where the floor on the wall meet called the cove area. That's what that would look like. Okay, just another example here. This is all that loose backfill area, so the water can very easily soak in. I mean, it's something like one inch of rain over an acre of property is almost equivalent to 28,000 gallons of water. So when that water comes, whether the pitch of your property or off your roof or what have you, it gains entry right alongside your home here. Building up hydrostatic pressure. A lot of these are job pictures right from our field inspections that uh, we see basically every day. <laughs> All right. That's it, this guy. All right, let's move forward to our next one. All right, so. <clears throat> All right, so you have a home with a, with a water problem. And usually water problems come when the home is older. So this has been going on for many years. A lot of times I meet with homeowners that have lived with a water problem maybe 20, 30 years and they don't want to address it until the day that they decide that they want to put the house in the market and they know that the next buyer is going to have a problem with a wet basement. And uh, they're going to have a home inspector come through. So, so yeah, a lot of times you will take a financial hit on the if you can even sell a house with a wet basement today. They're very strict about it. So... What we do here is, after many years of these problems going on, we're contacted by the homeowners and we come out and we rectify the situation. So this right here is a cinder block wall that has actually failed from lateral hydrostatic pressure, which we actually had to replace the whole entire wall, which was an astronomical cost. Okay, inside glimpse of a cinder block here. Once again, the, the entry of, of water now the thing is, I don't know if uh, you folks ever saw on TV where somebody karate chops a cinder block with their bare hands. They soak it in water for a week. When a cinder block has water in it, it loses eight to ten times its structural integrity. It gets soft like a sponge. So if you've ever, if you have a wet sponge in your sink, and you take that sponge, you can bend it and shape it when it's wet. But if you take that same sponge and you wring it out really good, you come back two days later or so, what happens? The sponge is hard as a board, right? Okay, so that's what we do. So it's kind of redundant, you know, even though they call it waterproofing, we actually do water management. It's very, very difficult to waterproof a home because you're not working with a boat. Okay, so once again, water inside the walls, water against the walls, heavy soil. What I look for when I do my inspections with homeowners is I look for, you know, the obvious. I mean, I don't have x-ray eyes, but I look for what's called indicators. Remember that white stuff on the wall called efflorescence? Also, what's called step cracking. There's, they're like Legos. They're, they're blocks that are starting to come apart. Okay, here's some more step cracking. Now, a lot of times customers put paint over the walls and try to stop them from doing their weeping action. I mean, I mean, the anatomy of a cinder block is designed, like our skin, they're designed to sweat. Now, a lot of times customers will put waterproofing paint over top of that wall. Try to close those pores or any other type of paint. But the problem is paint is organic based, so a lot of times it breeds mold. Okay, you can see you got mold all in the, the joints right there. Okay, and then this is this is the worst stage. I mean, this right here is it's our job as an inspector to come out and determine you know, the severity of the wall, if it's even repairable. A lot of times it is repairable, but sometimes it's, uh, it's the wall's done what's called deflected. It's deflected too much where it needs to be replaced. So the ideal is to jump on it before it ever gets to this point. It's the most economical time to address it. There we go. So 
And then this is basically what we call about like a stage five, the stage that we don't even talk about because, uh, you know, that it's absolute wall failure. So the idea is never to let it get that bad. Okay, this is what's called a vertical crack in the center block. And then we have the horizontal crack. So when I go out and do my inspections, you know, I never want to see a horizontal crack there because a lot of times in the belly of the wall, that has the potential to act as a hinge. So, you know, a lot of inspectors and home inspectors, they really, they really don't like to see that. That's a potential that can happen. Okay. Now, through the years, there's many different repairs that other companies and maybe even engineers have designed for this. Uh, an older style was they would actually put steel I-beams up against the wall to try to stop that wall from moving. Here's a type of repair called wall pins, where they actually mount uh, big steel plates up against the wall, and then they drive a rod through the wall, maybe out about eight to ten feet, a very large rod, and then they put a a hole of concrete with another plate like that, hence the anchor. Okay, this is a type of repair of what's called carbon fiber strips. It's belts on the wall. Okay. Now here is an install that we're very familiar with. What we actually do is we put the steel rods down inside the core pockets of the center block. These are called integral wall pins, rebar wall pins. So the idea is, if you ever known anybody to break a bone really bad, our thought process is, you know, when you go to the hospital, you know, they put the bone back and then they put pins in it, right? So that's what we do. So we put pins inside the wall. So it takes somewhat of about 1,500 pounds of lateral pressure to move and crack a cinder block. When we put these pins in it, that one pin is rated for approximately 40,000 pounds of pressure. And then we usually space them anywhere from two, three, to four feet away from each other. So we can actually pin that whole entire wall and give you a warranty that that wall will not compromise. Okay. What we have here, we have Ken talking about those interior, interior wall pins. And we can sometimes install them from the exterior of the home or the interior of the home by creating openings into these hollows of the cinder block and putting the pins in there and then we fill it with a high density concrete. Once again, the older technology of putting a steel channel up against the wall. Okay? So, yep, even poured concrete foundations crack as well. And when they crack, a lot of time under that hydrostatic pressure, they really crack. They open up. Especially when the you have the freeze thaw. So a lot of a lot of our homeowners with newer constructions homes, they call us and they complain about, you know, they have cracks that are actually weeping on the inside, creating mold issues in their basements. Okay, what we have here is we have Ken talking about the type of structural repair that we do for poor concrete foundations which is called a steel plate crack repair. So we gusset a steel plate over top of the foundation, and then that repair is rated for some 95,000 pounds of pressure. So that's how we can give our customers lifetime warranty on that. 